Don't miss all of it. Brilliant. And do, and there's refills of coffee and tea at the back. If you brought your own breakfast with you, that you know, feel free to you know have that at the moment. There are spare coffees and um, croissants and chocolate teas and all the rest of it as well. So um, please uh, feel free as we uh, meet and gather to, to be able to um, eat and welcome each other in that way. Our first page. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. God of our days and years, we set this time apart for you. Form us in the likeness of Christ, that our lives may glorify you. Amen. On your tables, um, you have a candle, um, or if you're not sat at tables, then, uh, then around it. And uh, hopefully there are some boxes and matches. If you haven't got a box of matches, then there's a uh, table here you can light your candles from the front, but people can light the candles that are on their table at the moment. Or if you're not at a table, you can come and sit at a table with uh, the candles. <laughs> you can have it, there's a candle over here. If you want. There's a candle over here. You're okay. <laughs> We're going to light our candles as we come before God in confession. It's always a chance just to hold hold a moment of uh, time before God to say sorry for those things uh, that have gone, that have led us away from God and knowing that God invites us back into his love. Jesus calls us to be children of God, to worship with joyful hearts, to come together in love and faith. So we take a moment to bring those things of the past week which we have said and done that have hurt others and the world in which we live, knowing that God forgives and heals us. Jesus calls us by name to join in his creation. Forgive us when we have turned away from this call. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus came with good news for all people. Forgive our reluctance to share that good news. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Jesus came in love to a world of suffering. Forgive our pride and selfishness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. So I'm going to invite, Dave's going to come and read our um, reading, which is the gospel for today, um, for us today. There's no junior church, um, uh, because it's the holidays, uh, and yeah, there was something else I was going to say, but I'll just say, Dave, take it away. (laughs) The reading this morning comes from Matthew chapter 15, verses 13 to 20. (coughs) Jesus went to the territory near the town of Caesarea Philippi, where he asked his disciples, Who do you say the Son of Man is? Some say John the Baptist, they answered. Others say Elijah, while others say Jeremiah or some other prophet. What about you, he asked them. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Good for you, Simon, son of John, answered Jesus, for this truth did not come to you from any human being, but was given to you directly by my Father in heaven. And so I tell you, Peter, you are a rock, and on this rock foundation I will build my church, and not even death will ever be able to overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. What you prohibit on earth will be prohibited in heaven, and what you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. Then Jesus ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. This is the bit where I always get slightly nervous 
because um, it always works every single time. So you arrive at 8 o'clock in the morning and you set up the deck, run it through, and the video works, the sound works. So pray uh, because it should all come through. No, not that. Ah, oh, there. Yeah. That's all sounding good. I'm going to turn this off now because that will make that one sound not so good. to liberate them. They're going to say to me, well, what is this God's name? 
So Moses says to God, what is your name? And God responds, Moses, you tell them, the Lord sent you. Now this name, Lord, if you're reading it in an English translation of the Bible, the name is spelled capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. The name appears in the Bible over 6,000 times. But, but it wasn't originally written in the English language. It was written in the Hebrew language. And in Hebrew, the name is essentially four letters. Uh, we, we would say Y-H-V-H. But in Hebrew, the letters are pronounced Yod, He, Va, He. Now, some pronounce the name Yahweh or Yahweh, although in many traditions, the name isn't even pronounced because it's considered so sacred, so mysterious, so holy. In fact, the ancient rabbis believed that these letters were actually, they function kind of as vowels in the Hebrew language. They, they believed that they were essentially kind of breathing sounds and that ultimately the name is simply unpronounceable because the letters together are essentially the sound of breathing. Yo, hey, va. Hey, is, is the name of God the sound of breathing? Now, the book of Genesis says that when God created the first person, God took this dust, this dirt from the ground, and God shaped it, formed it, and then breathed into it, and it became a living being. Now, the Hebrew word for ground is the word Adam, and this first person, his name is Adam. And, and so essentially, it's from Adama, we get Adam. We pass the name Adam. From ground, we get ground man. From the dirt, we get dirt man. There's, there's this paradox at the heart of what it means to be a human being. We're, we're fragile and vulnerable. We come from the dust. As it says in Ecclesiastes, all people come from the dust. As it's written in the Psalms, all come from the dust and then die and return to the dust. that this physical breath that we all possess is actually a picture 
of a deeper reality. In the Bible, the word for breath is the same word as the word for spirit. In the Hebrew language, it's the word ruah. And in the Greek language, it's the word pneuma. Like one scripture says that when God takes away the ruah, the breath of all living creatures, then they die and return to the dust. But when God sends the ruah, the spirit, they are created. Breath, spirit, same word. And then the first Christians took hold of this idea, then they took it way farther. They actually believed that the Spirit of God resides or can literally dwell, live in a person. One scripture in Romans 8 says that if the pneuma, the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from the dead, is living in you, then God will give you life. Another scripture says that what the Spirit of God does living in you is it sanctifies. Now the word sanctify, it means to, means to like purge or to clean out. What it essentially means is that when you let God in, when you breathe, what happens is you become aware of all the things you need to leave behind, everything you need to let go of. If you are totally honest right now about what's going on inside of you, what would we find out? What would you say if you just kind of opened it up? What's inside? What are you angry about? What are you concerned for? What are you anxious for? What's bothering you? I mean, what's filling up your headspace? What's stressing you? I mean, if we were to be totally honest about what's going on inside of you, is there anything you need right now to breathe out. Jesus said that what the Spirit of God does is the Spirit guides us into truth. Is there anything you need guidance in? I mean, maybe what we need is as close as breathing. Another scripture says that God gives the Spirit without limit. Is there anything right now you need to breathe in? As it says in Ephesians chapter 4, there's one God and Father of all who's over all and through all and in all. As it says in Hebrews chapter 2, there's God for whom and through whom everything exists. Or, or as Jesus said it, God is spirit. And you are a sacred creation of God. The divine breath is flowing through you, and it's flowing through the person next to you, and it's flowing through the person next to them. You are on holy ground, and there is a holiness to the people around us, and, and how you treat them. Jesus said that whatever, whatever you do for them, you've done for him. God is there because God is here. And, and our person... A person doesn't have to agree with this for it to already be true. God has already given us life and the breath we just took and the breath we took before that and the breath we're going to take and the breath after that. When a baby is born, what's the first thing it must do or this baby isn't going to make it? Does this baby have to take a breath or say the name of God? And what's the last thing you do, and, and then you die? The last thing we do is we take our last breath? Or is it that when we can no longer say the name of God, we die? I mean, is it possible that you could be having a meal with a good friend of yours who, who, who doesn't believe in God? And you could be sitting across from the table from your friend who is saying, there is no God. And, and what you would be hearing is, May you come to see that God is here, right now, with us all the time. May you come to see that the ground that you are standing on is holy. And as you slow down, may you become aware that it's in Yom, Hey, Va, Hey, that we live.
videos, DVDs, they're all about the same sort of length, they're about 10 minutes, I think they're about 20 of them. So um, if, if you got something from what he said or uh, how he presents or, or how he speaks, then um, let me know because I, I have uh, uh, available other sort of um, other ones that he's done and he, he talks across sort of a breadth of things. I think <laughs> two things that strike me. What I always forget him is American until I hear his voice. I mean, he writes in a way that feels quite American because um, of that sort of style and questioning. Um, but, um, but it's only when I sort of close my eyes and listen to him and think, oh yeah, I forgot that you're American. Um, and, and the second is that I, I, the, I think the, the thing for me that is striking is that he, he just really knows his Bible. Just re and like and, and there's an energy about how he, he talks about words of the Bible and, and, and whether that's in Greek or Hebrew in a way that that that, um, that, that feels accessible um, and, um, and 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 whole and um, confident and in uh, in a way that uh, feels encompassing uh, rather than threatening. So that, that's just a few things about why I, I, he's been quite influential in, in my reading and my my life. Um, so, but if you if you like that uh, stuff, then let me know. I've got I've got others I can show you. We can indeed watch them as, as a group in different forms. I, mean, right, uh, I asked um, uh, Elaine a couple of days ago, so she had a huge amount of time to prepare. Um, no, not, no, no. <laughs> I've got two Elaine's at the same table here, so <laughs> Elaine's ready. Like, Me? No. <laughs> I asked Elaine Jeremiah a couple of days ago if she might um, speak about, um, about a, a favourite passage of the Bible, perhaps a, a, a question that she had about a Bible, whether that's a um, an over life thing or whether that's just in the last couple of months perhaps so um, I'm going to invite Elaine and she's going to come and I think you're going to read a passage and then yeah, about it okay um, let's hear uh, what Elaine's going to say about it um, so I'm just going to read from Matthew chapter 6 verses 25 to 34 and then a, a couple of verses in chapter 7 this is why I tell you do not be worried about the food and drink you need in order to stay alive or about clothes for your body. After all, isn't life worth more than food? And isn't the body worth more than clothes? Look at the birds. They do not plant seeds, gather and harvest and put it in barns, yet your Father in heaven takes care of them. Aren't you worth much more than birds? Can any of you live a bit longer by worrying about it? And why worry about clothes? Look how the wild flowers grow. They do not work or make clothes for themselves. But I tell you that not even King Solomon with all his wealth had clothes as beautiful as one of these flowers. It is God who clothes the wild grass, grass that is here today and gone tomorrow, burned up in the oven. Won't he be all the more sure to clothe you? What little faith you have. So do not start worrying, where will my food come from, or my drink, or my clothes? These are the things the pagans are always concerned about. Your Father in heaven knows that you need all these things. Instead, be concerned about everything else with the kingdom of God and with what he requires of you and he will provide you with all these other things. So do not worry about tomorrow. It will have enough worries of its own. There is no need to add to the trouble each day brings. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks will receive, and anyone who seeks will find and the door will be opened to those who knock. So, um, I don't know about you, but I'm someone who quite often suffers from anxiety. Sometimes my life has been worse than others, and sometimes I really struggle with it still. So, uh, this is, you know, it, it's really helpful because God's saying, you know, you don't need to because just focus on today's troubles and don't worry about the future and don't worry about, about what's to come. Um, sometimes I sort of think, well, he's not saying that tomorrow won't have any troubles. I'd feel much more, more reassured if he'd said that tomorrow won't have any troubles. But he doesn't say that. Tomorrow will have enough troubles of its own. Just focus on today. Um, and that's really helpful to me. And I'm, I'm trying to bear that in mind. And, and if I have a stressful day ahead of me at work,
first and kindest thing to think about bird will bear fruit and, and try and keep those in mind and I love the, the next the bit at the end about Martha you will receive and, and, and that's just such a great promise to us as Christians that if we ask we will receive and, and, and if we seek we will find and, and that's really special and precious as well just to know that God is a bountiful God and he wants to give us good things and if we just keep asking him you know he's going to give us wonderful things and another part of the Bible says that we can, he's, gonna, he's got more in store for us than we could ever wish for or imagine so that's why those verses are helpful to me Thank you Elaine it, um, it often takes um, thank you, that's really really helpful I, I like I love, um, I love talking to people I don't know a, a, a bit about this conversation but I love talking to people about sort of what particular um, bits of scripture and it changes I think over time and it, 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 uh, it changes day to day doesn't it but there, there can be real passages that, that keep us going don't they that we, that we revisit that we come back to uh, I don't know whether you meant to have favourite bits or favourite verses um, but I think we can certainly have bits that really speak into um, our lives at different points um, I'm, I'm going to throw it out there for a bit because uh, we're not allowed to discuss it. Uh, um, there's something about God giving for today, and there's something about um, what Belle was talking about, about um, the spirit, about how, how we're in the presence of God when we're with each other. Um, and when, when you said that, you know, it's not just the breath of God in you, but it's the breath of God in the person next to you. I, I sort of looked around, I thought, that's, that's an incredible, extraordinary claim to make that you know, we're living, um, breathing um, spirits of God as, as we as we walk across the earth today and in, in all that we meet. Um, I did wonder if anyone felt called now to to to, to be uh, to say anything for themselves about perhaps what maybe the video said, or perhaps anything that Elaine has struck in them, or anything of, of this morning, or if you, if you just had a just a bit of favourite Bible passage or a story that has spoken to you at a particular point. It doesn't have to be you know, erudite or academic. It just, you know, um, so I, I was going to throw it out there. Did we, does anyone, before we pray, want to speak about perhaps their experience of the Bible or or a, a story that they, they want to share? Because the Spirit can move if they want. Do, you know, doing that, speaking about that in a way that, that um, isn't 
you know, that, that doesn't feel heavy or burdensome, but that has light and, and joy. And, um, and, and the book that we've been reading, that, that, that Belgium talked about how, how to read the Bible, it, it's just a way in, there's just different ways in so that all of those, those um, stories, poems, histories, hymns, letters, gospels, you know, it's a whole amalgamation and, and that sense of, wow, we've, we've, been, we've been gifted this treasure um, as communities, as, as uh, uh, you know, as, as the Christian faith, but also obviously the Old Testament speaks beyond um, just our Christian faith to our uh, Jewish brothers and sisters as well. So that, that sense of shared story that we have um, that is that is ours to, to um, gift on to, to uh, others and, and new generations. It's a, it's a huge privilege, I think, um, uh, rather than um, a burden, but a, a gift for us. So I guess that's my prayer, that we, we learn to unpack and explore and tell those stories and find those words and those, those bits that hold us um, and be able to say that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray together. Creator God, we thank you for that gift of the Spirit that you give each and every person. We thank you for that breath in us. And we pray that as your people and as a church we breathe out those things that we need to breathe out. And we breathe in those things that we need to breathe in. We thank you for the different ways your scripture inspires and speaks to us today through story, through Jesus, through his <coughs> gospels, through the church, through the letters, through the poems, through the Torah. How still today we are gifted uh, to seek, explore, understand, and, and allow those pieces of scripture to speak through our lives and, and into your world. So we pray, Father God, that your church today will, will know the gift of that spirit, that gift of that spirit in each other, who will seek to serve others in that. We pray that your church at this time will know its foundations with confidence and courage to speak of you and your Holy Spirit in this world. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, we thank you for today, for the gift of this very day. Tomorrow will bring what it brings, but today, today brings your presence and your blessings. We pray for places in our own lives and also your world that feel challenging and broken. We pray your healing on those places and those people. We pray particularly in this time for the people of Belarus. We pray for the United States of America as it leads up to its election. We pray for our own government and parliament and all those in positions of leadership that they might seek to know what they need to let go of and what they need to breathe in. We pray your wisdom on people making decisions. 
we pray your healing on your work. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for this community of Fishbones. We pray for those who live next door to us. Thank you. 
those in a moment. Um, a couple of notices. One is, um, now I have them on me, but there are some magazines. Dave, can you wave some there at the back? So if you um, if you are due to pick up a, a group of magazines or pick up a, or you want a magazine for September, then do um, take a magazine uh, away with you. Um, so uh, they're all out. Thanks to Ian to do all that work. Um, to say happy birthday, Elaine. We give Elaine a round of applause. It's a big birthday today. Yeah. We hope you have a really lovely day. Uh, and uh, I believe it's Keith's birthday as well, so if Keith's online, then uh, happy birthday, uh, Keith Hodges as well. Um, next, oh, for, uh, the, uh, there's one more service in the benefits today, that's at 6.30, that's at St Mary's, that'll be uh, communion this evening there. And then next week, it's the 30th of August. That's right, isn't it? That's a good thing, isn't it? Um, and so... I'm trying to get this right. It's 8 o'clock morning prayer. I'm also leaving morning prayer here at 8 o'clock uh, um, here at All Saints. And at 10 o'clock, uh, Jane and Diane and I are, are leading the worship up at St Mary's at 10 o'clock. That's next week. Um, but let's think about today. Today, we're here. <laughs> and then it's 6.30 tonight if people uh, want. Um, I don't think there's any other messages. Warden, Nigel, or Dave? No, 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 anything we know? No? Good, we'd like to keep this short. Um, let's uh, stand with, we'll finish with a piece at Cafe Church, we tend to finish with a, um, a piece, so let's stand for our piece, um, and then do feel free to uh, chat some more outside um, uh, as we go. May God keep you in all your days, and may Christ shield you in all your ways. May the Spirit bring you healing and peace. And may God, the Holy Trinity, drive all darkness from you and pour upon you blessing and light. Amen. God has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let us offer one another a sign of peace, a wave, a handshake, an arm bump, an elbow, uh, whatever it is that we do nowadays, and go up with God's love and blessing in Jesus' name. Amen.